Lord. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a good praise. We thank him. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because he's worthy today. Amen. How many of you know he's worthy for real? Amen. 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 Everybody with your Bibles in your hand. Where your device is, where your Bible is. Let's say our confession together. Or repeating after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught. The infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the entrance of your word brings not only life, but it brings life. And we thank you for the things that are freely given to us of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take us to where we need to be. We welcome you into this place. We welcome you to be our guide and be our paraclete, run alongside of us. And we thank you what's going to be delivered sovereignly to this people as the will of God for this time and this season. And we thank you for what you are doing and moving out and moving into us. God, we love you today. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said together, amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. We're going to talk. This is lesson number two of fear and faith. Fear and faith, lesson number two. And the title to today's lesson is Keys to Overcoming Fear. Keys to Overcoming Fear. It might fall in the category of foundational, but then it might take off into some areas of new revelation. Keys to Overcoming Fear. Since this is a time where fear seems to be such a pronounced issue, we need to talk about it as it relates to faith and how to deal with, with overcoming fear. And we might well just face it, all of us have a fear of something. Amen? Amen. And so if I don't finish all of the, the particular uh, uh, steps or each one, uh, uh, I'll complete it uh, next week. I'm not going to rush through, but I'm just going to make sure that it's, it's covered well. It is covered like it needs to be covered. Keys to overcoming fear. Keys to overcoming fear. Number one is realize that God is with you. And sometimes they're so simple, see, like it ought to be a no-brainer, but they're not. Because these are not the go-to places. You have to realize when there is fear that God is with you. And I'm going to say it like you need to write it down. Realize that God is with you. And that's who he needs to be with. He needs to be with you. Amen? You want to assess everybody else's fear, but he needs to be with you. Realize. People fear a lot of things. People fear what the future will bring. They fear corrupt officials. Boy, do we fear that. Illnesses, 
death, terrorist attacks, financial crisis, and the list goes on and on. Fears. The problem is, with fear is, is that when it's not controlled, it may lead to a stunting of spiritual growth. If you don't handle fear, it will stunt your spiritual growth. It'll stop you from growing into the places that God has designed for you. And part of your spiritual growth is where God is taking you as a faith walk. Because that faith walk is, we walk by faith and not by But if you're fearful of walking by faith, unless you can see it, then it'll stunt you spiritually. Because some of the places God is taking you, he don't necessarily show you the end from the beginning. He just says, trust me and start walking. All scripture, he did that way. Throughout scripture, we find that he told people, go here. He told, told Abraham, leave from where you are, from your family, and go to a city whose builder and maker is God. Where is that? Because we're such knowing people, we got to know where we're going. And we think that we can count up the cost so we'll be ready when we get there. And you can, and and, in actuality, you won't necessarily be ready every time you're told to move for the next place. You're trying to pre-plan and prepare for it. And sometimes what God moves you in, you're not prepared for. Oh, God, am I in the right house? You have to trust him in that because many times when he moves you to somewhere else, it's a stretch. He stretches you beyond what you know, what you what you heard in the past. He's moving you to different places. Anybody undertaking some new, 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 new task and stuff and God is stretching you in there. You didn't even know you could do that. I think during this COVID shutdown, you're finding skills you didn't think you had. You're learning how to do something. Somebody might even learn how to cook during this time. Oh, I'm sorry. You find out that your oven is for more than storing pots in. You know, you know, you go, you're going to find out some stuff. And, and the point is, is, is that, that, that God will stretch you, and if you're fearful, he can't take you. Because anybody that's fearful, he cannot work with it. He needs you to be faithful, yes. not fearful. Say with me, he needs for me, needs for me. To, be faithful, to be faithful, not fearful. And the problem is not moving in, in, in faith and moving in fear is that you stay within your fear restrained comfort zone. And your comfort zone is not a good place to be because anything that stays comfortable, it doesn't go forward, it goes backward. Let me show you. If you come home and all you do is eat and sit on the couch and watch TV, you'll start, your body and everything else will go backwards because you're sedentary. Anything that doesn't move gets sedentary and it goes backward. Over in Israel is, 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 is the Jordan Sea And on one end, it runs to the Mediterranean, and on the other end, it runs to the Dead Sea. Well, when we were in Israel, we we kept exploring why they called it the Dead Sea, because the water runs into it, but it has no outlets out, so everything stays into it, so the salt just evaporates and becomes concentrated, and it's an actual flowing sea. And you can see the ripples, the wind is moving it along, But when you get inside of it, you dare not open your mouth and drink it because it's all salt and you'll die. But you can float on it, but nothing lives in it. But on the other end of the Jordan, where the Mediterranean is, there's all type of fish, all kind of vegetable life under the sea. Everything is going on in in, in the Mediterranean because it's flowing and it's moving. See, fear will cause you to become a dead sea. 
Well, what you need to be is the Mediterranean. Say amen, somebody. Amen. To realize is what I said in our first thing. It says, number one, realize that God is with you. That realize is, is a powerful word. Realize. What does realize mean? It's when the light comes on in your spirit. Oh, 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 you've got to get to the oh and the aha that God is with you. And when you start thinking that way, you start moving out of fear. God is with me. When you're undertaking something that is challenging you, God is with me. How many of you know that's a good place to retreat to, especially on these jobs? God is with me. God is with me. So, so when you realize it's an aha spirit, the light is on. It, it has come on, and, 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 and you have somebody with you. Isaiah 41 and 10, NIV. And it says there, so do not fear, for I am with you. Okay, how much more simple can it be? Don't fear because I'm with you. Who? God. Do not be dismayed. And here comes a parenthetical note. I'm adding this. I'm not adding to scripture. I'm just explaining the word. Dismay. Dismay means I'm confused by fear. And dismay means a total breakdown of courage. Total breakdown of courage. Sometimes when you get scared, you cannot think. And fear will help, will, 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 will erase your memory. Oh, you get afraid. You don't remember what you did. How do I know this? Anybody ever been about to have an accident and it seemed like your mind went blank? You didn't know which way to go. You were just hoping that you were turning out in the right direction to get out of it. But really, and then after you got out of it, you just say, I don't know what happened. But you were fearful that something was going to happen. So it shuts down everything else. So, so, so when, when you are in fear, it shuts down a lot of your mental capacities of thinking. And, 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 and it overrides them to the point that you can't even remember. Fear is dangerous. Fear will make you start hating people and being suspicious of people that absolutely does nothing. You're just fearful. And fear goes along with distrust. You distrust because you're fearful. Oh, I ain't even get one amen on that. You're distrustful. The verse gives us the reason to never be fearful. We must not fear because here it is. God is with us. Why don't we fear? Because what? God. Who? God. And here's some other passages that confirm this. And I'm going to just, uh, another passage. I'm going to run through it right quick. Psalm 118 and 6. And this is good news. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do to me. See, when you, when you realize what's in front of you, why are you afraid of the shortest person? You're afraid of the shorty, but you'll front God off. Come, oh, no, y'all didn't get that. You're not afraid of offending God. You do everything in front of God, but you're afraid of what men can do. When the fear ought to be of the Lord. Because he see you, and, and, and see, we, a man can get you out of this life. He can get you out. You can get killed, you can knock you, get you out. But God can get you out of eternity. And we don't fear that because we can't see him. 
And sometimes we won't, and some people won't see them. Like when I preach at funerals, I say, now that person is in a new reality. Everything that they've heard about the Lord, they're seeing now. And, and they, they want to say, hey, y'all, it's for real. It's for real. And you're going to be there a lot longer than you, you were in your body. But you don't fear. You fear that. And when you leave them, what difference does it make? Some people get in debt because they're trying to keep up with somebody. You fearing that you're going to get left behind. I'm even watchful of ministries because there is much uh, 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 competition between men. Who's doing what? I'm not sharing anything because I'm afraid you're going to get ahead of me. Well, that's silly. He provides for all of us. Amen? Amen. And you don't have to be jealous of anybody because when you look at it, you might say, oh, you keep all your stuff and you can keep all them bills with it. I don't have a lot, but I'm not in debt. Come on. I can sleep at night. Does that make sense? It, it'll be a better day when we learn to stop doing stuff for show. Because the people you trying to impress... They not even worth impressing half the time. <laughs> and you trying to impress them. Why are you trying to impress them? To do what? To like you? If they don't like you, they won't like you even, if, even when you try to impress them. They still won't like you. Some people think if I had money and I gave them some money, they, they'd be better with me. They'll take your money and still hate you. They'll take what you got to give and still dislike you. And walk away. They better had gave it to me. They better do something for me. They better do something for me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm aware of people, even as a pastor, that they use the church. They, they want it for a while. Then, then, then after they get some things and we, we bail them out of stuff, then that's when they hear from the Lord and he's leading me somewhere else. Well, my thing is, get your prophetic uh, uh, utterance early. Before you come after our stuff so we can give it to somebody that appreciates it. Are y'all with me on that? Get, get it from the source of where you're trying to go. If God is leading you somewhere, let him provide for you there. Does that make sense? All right. All right. Somebody sung, money can't buy me love, can't buy me love. Ooh, can't buy me love. If God protects you from all forms of harm, why should you fear? Will you then be afraid? The logical answer should be no. I won't be afraid. But we are, of course. It is easier said than done. That's why you need to hear the rest of my steps. The rest of the numbers. Because it's easier said than I won't be afraid. Well, you don't know you're not afraid until that thing gets tested. And, and tests will come. I'm not going to walk in fear no more. Boo! Oh, oh okay. Oh, the next time, I'm not going to walk in fear. Key number two. Simple. Trust in God. But it's not simple. Trust in God. It was shared with me, this message, from a bumper sticker. And, and, and here is that message. Every opportunity to fear is also an opportunity to trust God. Every opportunity to fear is also an opportunity to trust God. Do I need to say it again? Every opportunity to fear is also an opportunity to trust God. So when fear opens up, you say, this is my opportunity to trust God. Because when you trust God, it means you're surrendering. You're surrendering. And we trust him that according to Romans 
828, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Now remember, it works for the good of you when you are called according to his purpose, when you are operating in purpose. It doesn't work when you are just doing everything. We, we quote the first half, but we forget about that call according to his purpose. So when you are in his purpose, it, 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 it's going to work. Even when you don't see it, even if you don't believe it all the way, it's working for my good. It's working. And sometimes when it looks like it's the worst thing, he's really working it. And we got testimony after testimony that in a dark situation, God stepped in and turned it completely around. I never forget talking to my brother Harvey about when he when he could, uh, 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 contracted the COVID uh, virus and 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 what he he went through and 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 but he never ended up on a ventilator. He did have to have uh, 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 oxygen and all those things. And he talked about the mental torment, everything he went through, and all that kind of thing. But but he said in the midst of it, he heard a friend's voice that said, "Start praying, playing praise and worship music." And he played that music. And I've shared this testimony before, but it still blesses me. He played that music, and it helped him through. Because he needed to replace his fear with faith. Yes. 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 While you're going through, that's not the time that you need to commiserate with everybody. You need to turn to the only one that can really help. Yes. Yes. Oh, you know, you don't know what I'm talking about. You keep running from person to person, dialing everybody in the phone book, when you need to run to the only one that can really give you an answer. Yes. The one that can really help. Because sometimes the people you run into, they need help themselves. And you keep turning to them, and, and when they start talking, you say, I wish I hadn't called you. You're worse off than me. Well, if you trust God, trust him. And don't move to the right or the left. Trust him. God, I trust you. I'm not wavering. Because if you don't trust him, your flesh will kick in and try to do stuff on its own. And you cannot trust you. Grab your other hand, put your pen down, and talk to yourself. I can't trust you. You look at your hand, I, 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 squeeze the other hand, say, I can't trust you. You're talking to your flesh. You can't trust your flesh. Because your flesh will act up on you. At the oddest time, it'll act a fool. And swing out of, into everything that fear brings. That's why we walk by and not by. And our weapons are spiritual, not carnal. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down. They're spiritual. God don't need a carnal weapon. He don't, carnal is, 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 is a Latin word and, and uh, it, it means flesh, carne. He needs for your flesh to be killed, to die. And each time you offer your flesh because I, 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 I trust my flesh and it's breaking down every day. All right, all right. Psalm 56 and 3. Psalm 56 and 3. Whenever... That's, that's each time it happens, whenever. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Everybody, let's read that together. When, whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Whenever. When is whenever? All right. Whenever I'm afraid. You don't have a holiday to step outside of that. Oh, I'm I'll do it for this, but I won't do it for that. Let me tell you why, 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 why you need to rely on this verse right here. 
is because in most cases when we are afraid, we are powerless. Fear snatches power out. You are powerless. That's why most time when you get afraid, you stiffen up. It's the person that's drowning and somebody jumps in the water to help them and they can't even get the help because they start pulling the person that's helping them under the water too because of fear. And they have to tell them, loosen up, loosen up so I can take you. Let go, let go. Because fear makes you powerless. Remember I said that. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in somebody that has all the power. Oh, my God. You can't control terrorists. You can't control people bombing malls. You can't prevent natural disasters from destroying your city. You can't present, prevent death from knocking at your door. So why should we fear? Surrender your fear to God and trust him. You can't stop nothing. And we think because we get afraid we can stop. And sometimes even with parents, we're always overprotected because we're trying to stop something and it still happens. Because you're fearful. I, I'm, I've been here long. I know what's coming. Watch, get on out the way. God. No, you need to step back and let them learn how to trust God. Sometimes they're going to fall down, bust their nose. Be there with a Band-Aid and a handkerchief. You needed to get that nose busted. Oh, I didn't get a lot of amens with that. Because you're still trying to catch them just like they was in, they, they still in diapers. When you need to let them go. So that they can grow up and learn how to trust. Trust is a learned behavior. Come on, write that down. You have to learn how to trust. You must learn how to trust. And at first, you don't trust God, not really. You get saved, but you have to learn how to walk in trust. You have to learn how to trust. And you trust just like you learn how to walk, a step at a time. And along the way, you fall down, so, but you got back up, and now you can really walk. And in some cases, you can really run. Key number three, seek the peace of God. Seek the peace of God. You want to get rid of fear? You got to seek the peace. Fear brings turmoil to our heart and mind. When we are filled with so much fear, we can't think properly. It seems everything you do is subject to danger. We are constantly stricken with the thought that things can go wrong. Thankfully, Jesus left his peace. How do I know it? We read it in John 14, 27. And don't let everybody else's uh, uh, destroy your peace by their horror stories. And every time somebody tells you a situation, don't you think of the worst story that ever happened with that thing. John 14 and 27 says, and this is Jesus speaking, peace I leave with you, my peace. Jesus said, you're not just getting any old peace, you're getting my peace. My peace is the peace that can speak to the winds and the wave and, and, and call them what, what, what I am. I'm peace. I'm the prince of peace. And he spoke to the wind in the way and said, peace be still. You need Jesus' peace. Ooh. So you can get some rest. 
tossing and turning all night long because you're not at peace. How many of you have time when your mind is racing so hard on what you need to do the next day or what you got to work out until you, you don't even have no peace. You can't even rest good. You jump up. I, I, I had a little project to do early this, this morning because we had a uh, uh, friend in town and I promised to do something. And so I jumped at about 5.30. I couldn't hardly rest because I knew I had something to do and then I had to work on message, finish message for, for you all. I, so so y'all broke my peace. And so I jumped up and it scared Pastor Mara. She, she, she raised up and she normally don't raise up. She just turned over. She, <laughs> she, she, said, she said, what's wrong? I said, nothing. I'm just going downstairs. Peace. How many have nights like that? That you toss and turn stuff on your heart, on your mind. You just, you, you, your peace is interrupted. You need to pray, God, I need your peace. Jesus, send your peace over me. Because most time while you're thinking about it, you can't do nothing. Because the call you need to make, the office don't open till 9 o'clock. Go to bed and go to sleep. And it's a wonderful thing, thank you Holy Spirit, that God does this with us. When we relax and we let our spirit, uh, 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 our bodies rest, it's something about the Lord that, that our spirit never sleeps, while, but our body is getting the rest that we need. But what happens is our mind goes to a different place and it starts tinkering and working out the situation while you relax. You done took all, see, see, the body needs for you to get your stress out of there. And when you go to sleep, when you wake up, you say, huh. I know what I'm going to do. That's why your, your body had, your mind had to say, would you lay down? And in your thinking, you start working out. You know, your brain don't go to sleep. You go into levels of sleep, REM sleep, rapid eye movement, then total relaxation, then you get into the deep, heavy breathing, snoring all over everything, sleep. That's good for you. Might not be good for your partner, but it's good for you. So snore and let your mind, your spirit work it out for you. And when you get up, you get up refreshed. I know what's going to happen. Sometimes you agonize over stuff. When you get up the next day, you feel totally different about it. Am I talking right in the house? I'm trying to help us. He said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world do I give to you. See, see, this ain't the world's peace. Oh. The world don't even know what peace is. They don't know. Then he goes on to say, let not, don't you dare let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Because you got my peace. So don't dare let your heart be troubled. And don't you dare, after trouble, you move into fear. Don't be afraid. Come on, somebody. Look at somebody across the room and say, don't be afraid. And don't be troubled. Amen. And I know trouble is in some of your lives in this room somewhere. But I came today to tell you, don't be troubled and don't be afraid. Because you have the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ that is able to get you through. It's his peace, not your trust in him. Because he knows what to do. He's got an answer. He got an answer. You're trying to figure it out. And you're going crazy in the meantime. Not, needless to say, you, 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 there is no more hair to be lost. But you may ask, how can peace extinguish fear in my heart? You can't because the two are contrary to each other. Fear 
is contrary to peace. You have to do one or the other. And some of you try to walk the line in between. You are either going to be peaceful or you're going to be fearful. You make a choice. Peaceful or fearful. Which one are you going to be? But I'm going to tell you this. The Bible says you will have what you say. You keep declaring it and you will have it. I don't have no peace. I don't have this. I don't have that. And you won't have it. Keep saying you don't have no money and you'll be the brokest thing walking. And, and no money will find you. When I start declaring that all my needs met, I start seeing more surprises show up. God, I thank you. I thank you that it's met. And you start going through seasons, and it seems like everything you touch seems to generate something. You say, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't nobody hit me up after service, but thank you, Jesus. You, you know, you just... Number four, last one for this installation. Be filled with love. Love is so crucial to everything until it's almost pivotal, pivotal to, to your walk with Christ in every way. It's pivotal to your, your life, your kingdom life. It, it's foundation to it. Everything springs off of it. God is love, and those who follow God must also be filled with love. You cannot be a hateful person and be God-like. You're just as hateful as you can be. Nothing about you says God. Unless you add another uh, nasty, uh, another four-letter word after God. If we want to get rid of fear, we must replace it with something. Replace fear with something. If we keep our minds empty, fear can easily return. You keep it empty. I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to think about nothing. Shut up saying that. Because when you're not trying to think about something, you're thinking about something. 1 John 4 and 18 says this. And I referenced it in the, the previous lesson. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. Fear is a prison. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. He said, if you walk in fear, you are not made perfect in love. You are not made perfect in love. But up above that in that verse it said, perfect love cast out fear. But if you operate in fear, you have not been made perfect in love. Perfect love cast out fear. So if you stay in love, it's saying that you're less than perfect. Because you're, how does that, how do I need to explain that? Uh, uh, perfect love casts out fear. Who has perfect love? The love of the Father. God is love. When you are in the love of God, you are in perfect love. And if you don't operate like he does in perfect love, then you will get what fear does, and that's the that is subtraction from love. It's less than perfect. So you are not made perfect in love. Not God's love. Because fear is in there. And once you start loving, it seems like things start lifting. We can cast out fear with love. But how? Love is an affection and emotion that does not produce fear. Love does not produce fear. Ooh, that's a debatable point, isn't it? Love does not produce fear. If we truly love God, we should not fear anything. Wow. That's a lot. And, and, and the worst thing is, 
is, is, is believers who are afraid to die. You're afraid two places. You're afraid to live and you're afraid to die. Which one is it going to be? But the blessing is, if we die, we have a hope. We'll be with him forever. And then we can be like, like Paul to say, say, you know what, I got a choice in this. I don't know whether to stay here or, or to go on uh, to be with the Lord. But I know one thing, absent from the body is to be present. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. See, see you got to get just regular with that. If, if, even if I'm absent from, from here, I'm going to be present with the Lord. I got a choice. Everybody say with me, I got a choice. When love prevails, fear stops from existing. When love prevails, fear stops from existing. I'm going to give you two more. Two more statements. When love overcomes... Fear is suppressed. When love overcomes, fear is suppressed. So you need to lock that fear down. When it shows up, ah, bam, you die. But here is the ultimate victory. When, when love reigns, God is love, and love reigns. Fear is banished. When love reigns, fear is banished. So there they are, the first four. Realize that God is with you. Number two, trust in God. Number three, number four, blessings to you today. Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you for what you have supplied to us, what you do through us, what you do to us, what you allow us to have. And we thank you for more than enough. We thank you for the ability to trust you. We thank you that we know that we can handle the fear through love. We thank you that, that we have examples of people that walked in faith and not in fear and were overcomers. Help us to get to our, our determined good by not being in fear because we can't walk holding back from what you have faithfully assigned to us. And so God, we thank you and we give you the praise and we give you the glory because you know us. So in Jesus' name, we banish all fear and tell love to reign supreme in our life. Love reign over us. Reign. Reign supreme over us. Cover us. I feel that some things are going to break as you walk in faith and not in fear. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Be of good courage. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. So I banish fear in Jesus' name. I banish it in Jesus' name. And I call it out in Jesus' name. It's not of you. Because perfect love cast out Cast out fear. 
perfect love. Put your hand on your chest. Father, I thank you that today in Jesus' name, I rebuke fear and walk in faith. My heart is established in love today. And where love abides, fear cannot. Thank you, God, for your word to me because it tells me don't be afraid. Give God a good praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord again. To all of our listeners, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at dovechurch.org slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.